Hey guys, Slice here. I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of the hunting land that uh, I'm going to be hunting this fall and uh, give you a little idea where we were at when on the video that I posted scouting with my two children. Um, this is the top view of the hunting area. It's pretty massive. Um, I drew some borders, kind of. I put the white line through here because I'm not sure if this is actually part. I still got to look at that. Um, I don't know this land like the back of my hand uh, yet. Like I said, last year I only got to hunt it, um, and I was actually late hunting it uh, last year. I didn't get to hunt it till about the 26th of October. Um, bow hunting season starts here October 1st, and that unfortunately is on a Tuesday this year, and I'm not going to be able to hunt until Saturday which kind of sucks because you really want on public land it's really nice to get in there on the first few days of hunting because the deer will start learning what's going on fast on public hunting land now this place doesn't get slammed with a bunch of hunters I mean I'm talking probably two three cars in each parking area um, parking area number one actually gets probably the most that's parking area number one I just made some icons give you guys an idea of you know where stuff's at so and me I mean I do this for myself I obviously you know I use scouting trips stuff like that um, you know to determine you know the best it's easy to find funnels I'm sorry if I'm mumbling right now but it's kind of hard to speak uh, talk about things to put it into words instead of me just thinking it but anyways <laughs> um parking area number one usually has about five six cars in it but i think that's because it's just the only way to get to all of this all of this around here is from parking area one parking area two comes up it but then it cuts back and then it like goes way in. and that is a heck of a walk if you come from <laughs> park area three i mean all the, it's like really hilly uphill i don't know if you guys can see any it's a little bit of 3d it's a little easier if you change the shades so yeah if you could see them hills there um it's a good walk i mean we're talking ups and downs and 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 all that good stuff but uh <clears throat> go ahead and make this a little brighter here but um anyways we ended up parking in number four and what we did was let me turn this real quick oh wrong way it's facing north right now and that's also a great thing because i like to check which way the wind's going to come from you know that that'll have a lot to determine uh where i'm going to want to hunt and that's the million dollar question you know opening weekend or opening day finding out where to hunt your best chance of success all the scouting that you've done you know you want it to pay off early if possible especially when you're hunting public um so i still have a lot to go to determine that where it's going to be but anyways so here's the parking area and we walked through the woods down the main trail and ended up coming coming out here this is where i ended up stopping and saying you know this is pretty beautiful around here and uh, we came through here and we cut right and these were those two bucks were on our way back um, we ended up seeing those two bucks right up here is where me and Col my son saw that five pointer last year I think it was it was either on I can't remember which side but uh, anyways if you look real close I'm pretty sure you guys can see this if you see that real deep trail right there there's a lot of little ones going through here but what this is going to do is it's going to kind of tell me where these deer so it cuts through and then it branches off they sometimes go that way they sometimes go around you know maybe some are walking in here but something's telling me that they don't they don't like coming through this they branch off before that so if i could find this and set up on that They'll be coming out of here, coming out of here, and if you look real close, I mean, this all right here is just dug out. I mean, you could tell, this is probably where those bucks were at, really, 
when when we first saw them and then they ran around and right around here I think this might be the tree that we caught him crossing right here so it looks like we busted them around here coming out of over here like I'm expecting they ran stopped looked at us come around ran down this way and crossed right here going into these this strip somewhere down in there okay so this really helps out a lot I'll start knowing what to look for when I go out there I'll um, start to turn you know it'll make it a little bit easier you know to get to know of the land since I haven't hunted this place very often but uh, yep this is the deep forest that we were walking into I was kind of testing the camera in low light and it did great which I'm I'm really happy about these up here is where we saw the crows when we stopped and I got the picture of the crows they were right on that edge that was right here <clears throat> we ended up walking out and looking this way and that wants to be super slow so we'll just uh, we'll turn and uh, we were looking that way that was where the first doe was she might have been a little bit closer could have been over here this is where the second doe got a little bit better footage of her but it was still shaky like I said guys apologize for that um, I might invest in a, to a tripod or something like that if I could find one for 30 40 bucks I'll probably do that but um, I've probably spent all the money that I'm gonna spend on camera and and things like that right now um, there's a lot of things that I still got to get ready for bow hunting season I know it's still two months away but it comes fast especially when you got a lot of money to spend but uh, this is where my son told me he's seen a doe and a fawn coming through this thick stuff so we'll zoom in and I I think this right here might be a hidden gem there are two oak trees up here at the top of these I think one's right here and the brown one right there and they drop some really nice acorns last year I seen deer using this there was a scrape inside here the size of a freaking I mean it was the size of a car a little Volkswagen um, they were just scraping and digging and uh, we'll talk more about that if you guys don't know what that is we'll talk about that when it comes uh, during the rut and stuff like that I'll kind of explain you know in my opinion what scrapes are for what they're used for and things like that but uh, I actually did hunt this area last year and this is right here is where I could have shot that five pointer in the neck um, I opted not to I was walking up this trail it was like 10 in the morning I was actually gonna be doing some a little more scouting I was done with my morning hunt and uh, I seen a shadow just zooming through here so he was headed right to that scrape to check that scrape I ended up circling back and coming in the woods right here he started walking right here and then that's where he stopped and he looked at me a couple times but he just didn't really think like I was a problem I was really blended in too and uh, he looked behind him and that would have been my opportunity to draw I even thought to myself draw draw and I was just like and he's a tree was covering his vitals I decided I opted out not to shoot him in the neck because if you don't hit the artery esophagus or the spine that's gonna be a really bad wound for that deer now I'm not saying I won't shoot a deer in the neck but I really thought he was gonna take a couple more steps forward so but to my surprise he actually just turned around nonchalant casually and walked back the way he came so that was just unfortunate on my part but uh, if I knew he was gonna do that I would have shot him in the neck <laughs> but uh, anyways I ended up finding a tree right here this is all pine trees right here and this is a great bedding area and stuff like that um, sometimes you know they don't use it as a real consistent bedding area but they like to travel through it it's dark it's cool especially on them hotter days 
in the snow it keeps the snow off of them they do like to bet it in the snow because it's the only thing that's green left and they kind of act as umbrellas so they'll tuck themselves next to pine trees but I found an absolutely perfect tree to put my tree stand in my climbing tree stand it's straight it's tucked in there's trails by it I found fresh uh, deer droppings last year right by it and uh, I definitely plan on hitting that because I think this area right here not too many hunters are trying to hunt right off the path out here you know maybe get some a little bit of heat in um, the beginning of the season because you know everybody who hunts out here is going to know that these deer are hitting these soybeans so that's where everybody's going to head to the soybeans so what I got to do and then hopefully I can figure this out and it's a great strategy when you hunt public land it's awesome when it works and sometimes it doesn't work but I've tried it and it's worked is what I'll do is looking at this I'll know where people are parking and evidently they're gonna try to take the shortest possible route to this food plot and what I'm gonna do is try to get in there two hours before daylight <laughs> on Saturday morning I don't care if I gotta sit in the dark for two hours that's not much of a big deal to me if it means a chance of success the reason I say only two hours is because that's the rules out here you can't come out here any earlier than two hours before daybreak so I'm going to expect hunters to start showing up a half hour 45 minutes before light you'll have those warriors out there that'll show up hour hour and a half because they're pumped up about opening weekend of hunting or whatever but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for a funnel and I'm gonna wait and see if anybody pushes any deer on top of me is what I'm it's gonna be kinda of like a involuntary drive that these hunters are gonna do for me because once they start tromping through these woods in these parking areas um, in the dark with flashlights on these deer are gonna head to cover thick cover you know they're not gonna blast all of them out of there obviously but the ones they do they're gonna move and they're gonna move with a purpose so I gotta be really on my toes uh, about any deer coming by me it can happen in a second I gotta be ready for it but uh, hopefully I still got a lot of scouting to do to kind of figure out where the deer might travel their their escape routes but hopefully I can uh, get that done but and also put myself in a position to see deer if even if hunters don't push deer on me but uh, if you see this blue question mark with a possible bedding area um, I'm pretty sure this is a bedding area uh, the first doe that we seen in the shaky vi in the I keep calling it the shaky video once again guys I'm sorry that it was real shaky I don't have a tripod I might invest in one not sure yet like I said I got a lot of money to spend on hunting I think I'm ready for you know with what I got the camera system I got I think uh, I can I can just work with that but anyways um I think that they're coming from right in here because they they show up early so I don't think that they're real deep they're still showing up two two and a half hours before dark so that must mean that they're they're bedding somewhere right on this edge they're not going far for food so that's what I'm thinking um, not sure yet I still got some you know a little more scouting to do to try I'm not gonna walk through there and blow any deer out of there if possible um, I'm gonna do my best to try to stay on the outsides looking in you know I can do that now because it's not gonna hurt anything but coming up towards the season and I guess I really shouldn't worry too much about that because other hunters I can't control what they do and there might be just start stomping all the way up and down this food plot all the way around here and either push the deer you know farther back in or you know push them out to vacate the area over here altogether but uh, this is where we came back and then we seen the two bucks and that got me pumped I hope you guys were pumped too seeing that 
but uh, come down here and this is exactly where we've seen that doe that was snorting and those two fawns there might have been three but I know for two for sure I actually got two on video and I'm pretty sure that uh, I don't want to make an assumption but they either came from here or they might be just bedding right right on the right on the edge of the trail right back here because there's pretty nice trails going through here now I know this is a real hot spot for other hunters this back in here um, last year I think they come in they walk down and they come in right here and last year I mean this had always had guys I seen guys walking out right there a lot but uh, I've seen deer down here I seen one doe it was really funny because <laughs> she was out here eating I was coming from this way I was doing some scouting I would come down this way and turn the corner and seen her down here well I stalked all the way to about right here well she walked back in the woods so I was like well so I kinda slow still stalked all the way down this line even hung out right here trying to and I thought I heard her at one point so I stood there and stood there see if she'd just go walking by or moseying by and it was late in the morning like 10 11 o'clock so I was like well she's going to bed somewhere in there I ain't gonna bust her out of there I walked all the way down the line to start headed back to my vehicle up this way right when I got to where these fawns are where the doe and fawn is I looked back and I'll be danged if she wasn't standing back out here eating again. I was just like, what the heck? I mean, if I would have just cut up, cut up about 40 yards and then just kind of stood there, she would have stepped right back out. I would have probably had a shot on her. But that's how it goes. You know, everything's got to work out perfect. Um, you got to make the best decisions. And, uh, and sometimes you're successful. Most of the time you're not. So that's just how it works. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of what the hunting land looks like, and and uh, it's pretty nice, it's pretty big, a lot of oak trees, dropping acorns, food plots, funnels, um, we'll pick those out a little bit better when I get a little bit better lay of the land, and uh, stay tuned, so I'll just kind of try to post one of these um, before a scouting video or after a scouting video to let you guys know. Uh, where we were and where we walked. Hope you guys enjoy. Alright, we'll see you later.